This morning in our Saturday session, the Icelandic group of monsters and men. They first broke through in their home nation after winning a music competition. Then came the world when they recorded an album that spawned two international hits. We'll hear them perform in just a moment. But first, Ben Tracy traveled to Iceland to hear their story as they celebrate a decade since their breakthrough success. Don't listen to what I say. At their studio outside Reykjavik, the five members that make up Of Monsters and Men are trying out a new version of an old hit. Don't listen to word I say. Hey. In 2011, the song Little Talks got a lot of people talking about an unknown indie folk band from Iceland. I have like a really fond memory of that time. Yeah, and me too. I, I really enjoy going back to that. Nana Hilmer's daughter and Ragnar Thorlson are the band's lead singers and writers. It was a really great night. We met them at the music hall where they held their first album release party. Why did you decide to re-release the album 10 years later? We've been wanting to find ways to celebrate this because... Uh, We're very bad, by the way, at celebrating. <laughs> yeah, because you kind of have to be grateful for it. An album that put us like in the situation we're in now and gave us a lot, so I think um, it deserves a little birthday. That album, 2011's My Head is an Animal, also included the monster hit, Dirty Paws. In 2012, just as their music was hitting the airwaves in the US, the band traveled 4,000 miles to Austin, Texas to play the South by Southwest Music Festival where they played at a bike shop. A lot has been made of the fact that you went in there basically in a van and left in a tour bus. Yeah. Yeah, well yeah, that, that is kind of what happened. It is what happened. <laughs> With two number one hits, they toured for two straight years. The crowds captivated by their unique blend of folk and pop. Of Monsters and Men even bested Bjork, Iceland's other famous musical export, to become the first Icelandic band to hit one billion plays on Spotify. How much of the feeling of Iceland and what you see here, do you think inspires your music? I, mean, I think a lot. We're, we are very inspired by nature. We do a lot of these like big moments and then it's quieting down. It can go fast and slow, just kind of like nature can go. A little more wild. Yeah, yes. and unpredictable. Their sound has evolved over the course of three studio albums. And now, as they re-release the original, they've included a new single, Phantom, that was originally meant to be on it. But I feel that you do not see. It's like this beautiful sadness in that song. I wrote it when I was 16 years old. It's been with me like, half of my life. Like I've always had like a very melancholic spirit, you know? I am quite drawn to sadness in a way. Mm. Like I think it can be really pretty. But there is only joy in remembering how far they've come. The group had just formed in 2010 before winning Iceland's Battle of the Bands. I remember being very nervous. Super nervous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here at the Reykjavik Art Museum. Did it feel in the moment like it was going well? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. So you did not expect to win? No. No, I think it's kind of like we never expect anything good to happen, even though this has it. <laughs> was, you're wearing yesterday. the wrong shirt for that <laughs> kind of life model. <laughs> well, I, maybe, maybe, maybe I've changed a bit, you know. With time, perhaps a bit more optimistic and willing to take time to celebrate. It doesn't necessarily mean that it goes on forever. It, it can, you know, stop like this. Yeah, you just enjoy it and appreciate it.